We know the four elements, earth, air, water, and fire. It's the geometry of a square. We have this prevalent system of four all over our world. We have four states of matter, solid, liquid, gas, and plasma. We have four seasons. Winter is earth, spring is air, summer is water, and autumn is fire. We have four directions. We have four ways of taking in energy. Food, water, oxygen, and prana. We have four directions on the Native American medicine wheel. Also, we have the Mayan Hunab Ku, as well as the Dream Spell Calendar. This system is all over the ancient past in symbolism hidden in different cultures. Our reality can be divided in a number of ways that will yield alternative perspectives of what is happening all around you. If you look at everything from a perspective of one, which is unity, you're looking at the full encompassment of everything. You're looking at the source field. There are no dualities. Everything is one. If you look through two, you see duality. You're looking at the male and the female of reality, the structured and the creative and inspiration. If you look through three, you see a trinity, mind, body, spirit, male, female, child, up, down, middle, black, white, gray, or even little things like 111 or 333 on your clock. If you look through four, you see the four elements. They are the physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual, or perhaps 1111 on your clock. We can continue. Five is the pentacle as well as the dodecahedron. Six is the vector equilibrium, or cube octahedron, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. Do you see how each geometry is connected to a different energy? There's a lot of connections here that we can make to start seeing things bigger. Each point on the flower of life is one, and when you connect them, the geometries expand. Two is a trion ray. Three is a trinity, a triangle. Four in the flower of life is a vesica pisces, but it can also be a square. As these expand, they grow in dimension as well. Five is a pentagon, and six is a hexagon. Each of these numbers relate to our dimensions as well. Dimensions and densities are very interconnected, although they are not the same. Dimensions go like this. One is one dot. That's unity, or dimension zero. Then two is a line. That's duality. Three dots is a triangle, so you get a flat plane, a two-dimensional shape. Four dots is a tetrahedron, giving you depth, bringing you to the third dimension. There's no real way of drawing a fourth dimensional object in a two-dimensional video, but it's believed that they're as amazing as something like this in actual manifestation. You might notice that we're really only looking at up to six geometries. This is because as we're evolving, we're moving from a third dimensional awareness to a fifth dimensional awareness. So these are the ones that we need to understand. These geometries also work in tandem with the chakras. Everything is connected. So we have the four elements down, which means there are two more geometries to look at. Well, actually three, but the Merkava is a whole video on its own. The fifth geometry is the dodecahedron, which I associate to being the life geometry. Not creating life itself, but the expression of consciousness through the other four elements. Think of it like your awareness of each of the other elements. The awareness of your physical manifestation. The awareness of your emotional self, your mental self, and the realization and awareness of your spiritual self as well. We have five platonic geometries that form everything in creation, but we don't have a hexagonal shape. If we look at the flower of life, we see that its ultimate basic form is in a six-pointed shape called a hexagon. Want to see where else hexagons form in life? We have all of these hexagons, and yet there is no platonic solid that is formed with a hexagon. So, what gives? Well, I want to introduce the vector equilibrium, which was coined by Buckminster Fuller. It is actually formed from three two-dimensional hexagons that swivel around each other, and its basic shapes that make it up are an equilateral triangle and the square. These are the two smallest shapes that you can make with straight lines, and together they balance at each other's corners to create the perfect shape. Why is it the perfect shape? 
Well, amazing physicist of the future, Nassim Haramine, has put together a movie called Black Hole that explains this. The reason is that every single line which is connected in this shape is the same distance away from every other point, including the very center of the shape itself. Not even the platonic solids have that definition, which also makes this the most stable shape and polyhedron, and the basis of the three-dimensional flower of life. Finally, the only reason it's not a platonic solid is because it has both squares and triangles within it. Platonic solids are platonic because each face is the same, which makes me think that other shapes must exist that are balanced between two different shapes as well, and construct everything in the universe. To really learn more, check out Black Hole by Nassim Haramine. He actually has done a lot of videos out there which explains his theories and understandings of physics, and he's really amazing to listen to. His latest movie, Black Hole, is a good explanation of everything in just one hour, so we do recommend it the most. Before we end this video, I want to connect the final dots in the array to show you how all of these geometries are connected to life, and in turn, you. A seed in the ground sprouts up into a large tree. The tree blossoms a flower. The flower produces a fruit, and the fruit contains the seed. This is the natural progression of the cycle of life through consciousness on Earth. So let's translate that to geometry and see what happens. The seed of life sprouts the tree of life. The tree blossoms the flower of life. The flower produces the fruit of life, and the fruit of life contains the seed of life. In human evolution, I feel that the human race is still but a seed, an embryo, but about to expand into the tree of life. We're evolving consciously, and we're still stuck on the ground, stuck in the dirt, but not for long. Check out this painting I found on DeviantArt by the brilliant artist Adrian Kenyon. This is his depiction of the miraculous conception of creation and human history. It starts at unity, a sphere. The caduceus is seen coming from it, duality, then a trinity. Then, as the four elements come into manifestation, we get physical reality, crystals form, and water layers over top of it. All of these previous elements were conscious of their own, but now biological life begins to develop in the water and crawl onto land. We go through a few stages of evolution. Dinosaurs, basic mammals, and then humans show up. There's a lot of ideas as to where we came from, and we won't get into this now. Adam and Eve happens, the Buddha becomes enlightened underneath the Bodhi tree, and then something shifts. From this point to here is where we are now. Disconnected from our own natural spiral, paving over the ground, killing people for telling us that being materialistic can heed nothing good. Then come the world wars, and the world falls into chaos. And then something shifts again. From the destroyed world, another seed grows. We switch into a different reality. It starts out small. From out of the chaos, a tiny new earth emerges and grows larger. This is the new earth, a new realm of light and purity that we were meant to be connected with all along. The planet continues to evolve. Here exists angels, archangels, and multidimensional hypercubes. The planet becomes more crystalline over time. The last part of the spiral is the seventh dimension and the realm of God, an infinite number of multiverses dividing like cells in an embryo, an ultimate omnipresence as everything that is contained in all of these multiverses is a part of God's consciousness. A snake biting its own tail, an Ouroboros, is the symbol of cyclic rebirth like the phoenix. All of the information contained in the seventh dimension is held here like a nest for the next cosmic egg. There are a few other ideas that come to mind about this that I want to share as well. First, look at the shape of it as a whole. It's the trion ray, the geometry of DNA and light that we've been looking at before. If you line that up with the chakras, you can see how we go from a super dense space up to the highest frequency, until we once again connect with the same source that we were originally connected to. Doesn't that look familiar on the flower of life? If these theories about the flower of life are true, then that means this entire experience of human history and ascension and growth and evolution is just one wave of energy from one point to another on an infinite universe of possibilities. Each point is the supreme awareness of some aspect of the God Source consciousness field, and the energy that moves between it is the vibrations and waves of energy that we are experiencing called the electromagnetic field, as much smaller fractals of the same source energy have experiences through these waves. This image also doesn't account for the number of parallel realities that we could experience at this point. If the flower of life expands in these directions, then this is just one direction. Maybe instead of total destruction, which is what this image depicts, instead we make our first ET contact on this spiral and join our galactic family. On this wave, maybe something else happens. Like, we start getting superpowers, like in Heroes or something. Maybe all of that can happen right here too. Anything is possible. Such discussion is the nature of this show. 
You don't have to believe any of this. The power of it lies not in the reality, but the discussion itself. I was told once that art would change the world. I didn't know what that meant for a really long time, but now I think I understand. Art is the expression of any energy, whether it's physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual, whether it's male or female. It is the expression of consciousness. By taking our art to the next level and finding value in what we like to express and what we want to see expressed, we begin to share and express more of our own truth and our love and our freedom. That is the nature of the transformation on this earth, as well as the desire to do and create. The artist has put together a short explanation as well as a long 30-page detailed version of what this image truly means, at least to him. And if you want to go deeper, there are links in the comments to his website and DeviantArt page. We're also featuring a lot of new art on the Spirit Science print shop, which we highly recommend checking out as well. Namaste everyone. See you next time.